Good afternoon, friends in the academe. Thanks for having me. I am here to talk about the AMS A review and assessment during the period 2009 to 2020. First, let me dwell on the objectives of my presentation. Number one, to review and assess the activities involving the AMS over more than a decade. Number two, to determine what benefits and disbenefits, if any, resulted from the adoption of the AMS. Number three is to seek an answer to the question, must Riverside communities continue to adopt the AMS in their practice of green ecology? Some background information about the Philippines. 16.6% or 7 16.6 million of the people are under poverty level. About 20 million Filipinos experienced food insecurity before COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic even aggravated the problem. Small fishermen are the most impoverished occupational group. The poorest in income they are among the occupational groups. They gather the least number of fish, they have the lowest educational attainment, and yet have the largest families. We have had some experiences in, during our research on rivers. We encountered six to eight year old uh, children, like shown in the picture, who scarred streams for things material that they could exchange for cash and for fish that they could take home for dinner. We encountered a family that utilized mosquito net in catching whatever they could from a city stream uh, passageway, waterway. Now these realities uh, faced us with, uh, impressed us with the following. There is abject poverty among dependents on flowing streams. We have to do something to increase the fish population in streams. We have to control pollution for human health safety, and we must innovate for Filipino use. In order to be able to face up effectively with the problem at hand, we had to do a review of literature that showed us that phytoremediation removes measures of wastewater contamination like BOD, COD, TSS, and TDS. Icornia crassipis is into nutrient removal of total nitrogen, total P, and also heavy metals. Water hyacinth uptakes a lot of nitrogen. Icornia crassipis phytoremediates many heavy metals. The plant also has roots that clarify the water. Electrical charges in hyacinth root uh, are responsible for these charges that attract both organic and inorganic substances. Colloids of floating substances are attracted to the electrical charges in the roots. Kangkong or Ipomea aquatica removes 76% nitrogen and 83.3% of the phosphorus present in flowing waters. Of course, we attended some conferences on constructed wetlands. Our solution to the problems we saw is a technology known as the AMS, or the Aquatic Macrophyte Biosorption System, which we first tried and tested in Mulawin Creek of the UPLB campus. We tested three models, each with three requirements, namely, they should be able to withstand river flooding. They should be able to attract fish, both matured and juveniles. They should be simple with materials uh, to make them being locally available. In other words, the uh, technology should be low cost and easily transferable. What is the AMS? Well, the AMS is a type of phytoremediation using aquatic macrophytes and bamboo. The aquatic macrophyte is to absorb or take in and adsorb or cause to be stuck to it, dissolve substances and filter off floating materials by means of its mesh of roots. The bamboo is to prevent the aquatic macrophyte from being drawn downstream by the water current. AMS is considered by us as a fulcrum of the holistic biopark strategy in caring for riverside environments. 
Now let's look at the models of amps that we utilized in the past. Model one consisted of bamboo slots as shown in the picture. These are tied together and laid out in the stream from bank to bank. We had in our first trial more than two meter wide aquatic macrophyte that stayed on the upstream side of the amps. Our model two amps is the bridge type one that required a lot of bamboos to make, but it served two purposes for use as a bridge from one bank to the other, and also to serve as a uh, component of our amps. We have a third kind of amp consisting only of a single bamboo pole. In the picture that you see, we utilize kangkong instead of water hyacinth. And you can see the difference that resulted from our use of this plant. The oily sheen that was present in the upstream side of the amps had disappeared after passing through our simple amps. Here is a close up of that model three type of amps. Now let's go into the assessment of the three models. All are workable in bringing about increased fish and also in uh, reducing pollution of the stream. Model A is laborious, it is unsteady. Model B requires lots of bamboo and uh, it is dual purpose as already stated and it is also physically attractive. Model C requires the least amount of bamboos it also requires the least amount of labor. The Model B uh, amps is uh, worked on uh, by the community. The community that we had then was a garbage collecting community. And so the men in the community utilized Sundays as a day to work on the amps. The AMS uh, clarify stream water in Mulawin Creek. As you can see, here is the water before it goes through the AMS, and here is the water after it has gone through the AMS. Chemically, there is a change in, uh, in the water. We noted uh, lower BOD content and lower nitrogen also. But we are more interested in solving the food problems of the people. And so we see, we show here um, the difference between the fish, kind of fish, and the amounts of fish caught before and after the ants. Here's the before. Here is Juniper, whom we saw in the creek fishing. And here's the Bia that he caught eight in all during his half day of fishing. And here is the string fish that was caught by Mario. Mario here in a matter of two hours, three kilos of tilapia in a matter of two hours. So there is really a promotion of fish production by the ants as you can see from the fishes galore that I present. The AMS also improves biodiversity. These pictures of animals species are, were taken from Tanai River. All those observations served as a cause for the innervated information dissemination. And so what we did was to organize uh, local forums, local talks, and people attended our talks regardless the time of day. This was taken in the evening. And here is another, what, which was taken inside uh, Schumart, San Pablo. And our listeners were, of course, the shoppers. These are pictures that were taken in Barangay Jordan in Santa Rosa. This was taken in Putho Tontungin. And here I had an audience with uh, Governor Inares of uh, Rizal. Here are people from, the, um, from UPLB learning how to make the arms. Here are people gathered to clean up the stream before putting up the arms. And here is the amps made by this group of people, which was also installed by them.
So there is the EMS prepared by people from UPLB. And here is the first page of a flip chart that was prepared by students as a campaign material. It says here in Teon Aglinis Karayan, or let us clean the river. Now we, come, we have come up with uh, the criteria for M's establishment. The depth of the river water should be no more than knee deep. There should be a shallow uh, waterfall close by to ensure good aeration. There should be a nearby community to ensure available monitors to guard against vandalism and theft. And if our partner is a government agency, it should consult with me to ensure good function of the EMS. And so I have shown you the visible effects of the EMS already before. So uh, fishes in the EMS appear within the first 24 to 48 hours. And there is a need for manual efforts to prune the macrophyte regularly so as to avoid anaerobic conditions. Now we come to the methodology in my review and assessment. First, I examined the avenue for dissemination, which was direct personal introduction of the technology to stakeholders. This entailed visits to government officials, provincial governors, mayors, and barangay captains, and answering the consultation requests from Manila Bay, Penro Laguna, Penro Rizal, and Penro Cavite. We had also to establish network with the students whose professors invited us for seminars. And for those high school students who came to us, they uh, utilized the AMS as their project for their science fairs. We also had to involve NGO assistance because these NGOs were in charge of organizing local forms. Community leaders from the NGOs served as our touch bases in our techno demos. Then we also had to touch base with the communications media that enabled in TV interviews, mainstream print news spread, and regional magazines. We had to pull together all of the observed characteristics, attitudes, actions, human interventions of respondents or stakeholders participating in the AMS or Biopark activity. And so we come to the results of our uh, um, our assessment. I have prepared two kinds of tables. The first table is one that shows us the LGUs that we visited. We listed all of them. The places or occasions where we delivered talks or seminars regarding the AMS or the Biopark. We have about 15 of them and the number of government agencies that consulted with us. We have the Manila Bay and of course the Penrose. And here is the second table we prepared where we show the name of the respondent, the residents, their residents, their profession or involvement and the actions that they had done. I have highlighted the more important inputs to this table. We have first Ed Apatan, a barangay uh, justice who helped build the AMS. We have Darwin who also was in charge of building our AMS. And then we had Mario who uh, gathered the first three kilograms of fish for two hours only. We had Juniper who was able to fish for eight pieces of bia within a half day. We have Cora here who was one of the barangay tanods who helped us direct and monitor the AMS that we have established in Tanay River in Tanay Rizal. Then we have Joyce, one of the students who had the M's for a um, science project and won second place. Then we have here a class, a DevCom class that uh, prepared a, a video play called River Escuela, which was participated in by people from the community. Then we have uh, Dean, Don Papa of USD, who awarded us as community organizer and environment uh, uh, awakener. OK, 
Okay. This is uh, Sir Dario, who was president of the Rotary in uh, Alaminos, Laguna. He built the first M's through our help force, but when it got damaged by a storm, he built another one to replace what was lost. We have engineer Bruno from uh, San Pablo, from Alaminos Laguna also, who suggested that we utilize pulleys to escape flood uh, waters, escape flood waters damage. Then we have here uh, Sister Mitos Baldovino, an environmental advocate who intends to uh, uh, legislate, to work for the legislation of a provision for the EMS or the Biopark. Then we have Dean uh, Teresa Velasco of the DEVCOM, again, of the UPLB. She awarded us as environmental champion for fresh waters. We have Je Monsignor Jerry Bituon. Uh, he is a rector of the San Pablo City Cathedral. He is an environmental advocate. He is looking for funds for the publication of M's in comics. Then we have Maricor, Maricar Cinco, a newspaper correspondent for Southern Tagalog of the Philippines Daily Inquirer. She uh, published on page one and two with her page photo spread on page two of the Philippines Daily Inquirer about the M's. As an additional to what we have done before, we have included impressions about the attitudes of people toward environmental rehabilitation efforts. First, there is a seeming lack of trust or belief in the workability of the innovation we introduce. Uh, the people seem to, to lack initiative. They had this misconception that their own effort could not make a difference. They needed an environmental leader or champion to lead them in environmental work. Their expectation is of a reward for delivered community service or cooperation. Minimal community cooperation or involvement could be expected among them. And they think that there is non-sustainability of the environmental action that we are into. Concluding remarks. So there, ladies and gentlemen, is what life has been for the M's or Bayou Park in the last decade or in the last 10 years. The AMS is relevant in at least two immediate concerns to help address the problem of food security and to help arrest the gradual denigration of flowing waters through control of pollution. Along the way, we make small steps for the Filipino in small ways. But our hope for ripple effect is there. The small steps of the AMS Bayou Park are still continuing. By it, we hope that the AMS Bayou Park technology would continue to A, provide fish for the marginalized, and B, teach them how to fish as they ensure food security and the pro prevention of the degradation of the fresh waters in their area. Thank you very much and mabuhay.